In the previous video in this series, we talked about budgeting and cost for a book launch. Now, this week in this video, I want to focus on the revenue or income side of things, the other side of the coin, if you will. Now, huge, huge, huge disclaimer here. You, I, no one is ever guaranteed any sales, right? Just want to make that absolutely clear. You are not guaranteed sales. In fact, no one's guaranteed anything in life, okay? Um, we always hope for sales, hope for maybe a lot of sales, but it's never guaranteed. Um, so I just want to make that very clear. Now, saying that, I like to keep track of what is going on real time to see what's moving um, the sales needle and, if possible, double down on stuff that's working. Uh, it's not always possible, but I'm going to try my best, okay? So that's, that's kind of my goal. I'm going to show you how I track things and I'm going to give you a few ideas on how we can maximize revenue. Um, and hopefully some of these will, will strike you as interesting. Um, but it's certainly not unique. Lots of people do stuff. You just need to kind of open your eyes a little bit and put on that marketing hat that we all have inside us. Now, we've got like quite a few bits to cover, but before we get in, just a heads up, I'll be using the words like sales and revenue and income kind of interchangeably. This is not to be confused with profit or loss, okay? I'll have something brief to say about that uh, later in the video. Now, we, as I say, we've got quite a few bits to cover, so give that like button a panda high five and let's dive in. Um, starting with number one, book promos. Now, you know, I, I'm a fan of book promo sites, but saying that not all book promo sites have the readers that I'm looking for. So, for example, some promo sites will have a heavier emphasis on a certain niche and not other niches. That's just how it is, you know. Maybe a book promo site is into romance, much more so than horror or thrillers or something like that. You know, so you do have to kind of test these things out. It's not always going to work, but you do need to kind of test it out to see which one does work, right? And then when you do find the ones that do work, then you got to double down on those ones in the future, okay? So what I like to do is I like to track these to see which ones produce sales, downloads or page reads or more, whatever it is, right? So that I can use them in the future. Um, and yes, there will be some that don't perform at all or not very well. That's simply the cost of doing business. But as I say, track those book promos as they go out. So as the email goes out, make sure you track and see if there's a, a direct co correlation. So that's book promos. Number two, now, if you set up pre-orders um, before launch day or week, or whatever it is, whenever you're ebook eventually gets delivered. Um, I like to check to see if the pre-orders numbers, what they're like going into the week or into the launch day or publication date. Um, but really, if anyone's going to cancel their pre-order, I can't, I can't do anything about it. Um, so I don't, I don't really lose too much sleep over that. Um, now the sales from pre-orders is what I look at uh, to keep track of how launch week is going. Now, just a, a little tip here. Remind your readers, your ARC readers, or early buyers, or early supporters, or you know anyone who got in before launch day, basically to start leaving their reviews and, and honest reviews on Amazon and all platforms. Okay, so make make sure you try and do that. So I like to track um the pre-order sales and stuff like that. Now next one up is social media. Now I either schedule the posts or manually go in to post at specific times of the day. Um, when I think my audience is most active. And then I like to go and check to see if there's any corresponding sales um, within a few minutes or, or at least a couple of hours, um, you know, for, for like ebook downloads and stuff like that. If you're in, in some kind of Kindle Unlimited or some kind of thing with exclusive with Amazon, then you'll also want to check for other things, you know, um, like page reads or something like that. Um, obviously sales numbers from the ebooks. Now just a note here, print copies typically ship after the purchase date. So, the sale might be today, but then it only ships, um, the only, the sale only registers when it's shipped out. So that could be like in, in a day, two, or, or even three to five days. So it's impossible to say when people, or when the person, you know, the customer actually bought the physical copy of a book during the launch phase, but you can kind of make like an educated guess. So anything between one to three or five days is probably when they bought it. So again, that's, I'll kind of see if I can make any correlation between my social media posts and immediate ebook downloads or page reads, plus any corresponding sales that comes out through paperback or hardcover or whatever physical copies are. So that's something I, I would like to, to track really. Now let's talk about ads in general. Now if you're running ads, be it on Amazon, social media, elsewhere, you know, BookBub, whatever it is, Facebook, Google, um, try to track those. If you can, you know, kind of know where the traffic is coming from, which ads or platforms are converting to sales, um, that will be very useful because then you can, again, like I said, you can double down on the ones that work. Um, your audience probably won't be everywhere. You know, they'll be on one platform maybe more so than the other. Um, so it's really useful to see if you can get that, that ad data. Now, email marketing, you know, I've mentioned this before, but obviously 
I'm hoping you would have emailed your, your list like a week or a few weeks before to hype up your book. But now that it's like launch day or launch week, I would schedule at least two emails for the week and then I would track. You know, So every time I send an email, I'm going to be tracking. Um, did I see any sales from KDP from for the ebook or, or or something on DCD or whatever? You know, did did those sales come in within like a few minutes or maybe a few hours of when you um when you sent that email? Look, people understand when you are launching a new book or product that you're gonna email them a bit more often. Okay, some will unsubscribe, you know, granted, um, but most are quite understanding in my opinion. So what I would do is I would like send at least a couple of emails during launch week. Probably wouldn't do it daily <laughs> myself, but I have seen people do it daily and, and it, I guess it works for them, right? Again, it's one of these things you gotta test out and try and see how it goes. Launch party. Now, if you're doing a virtual or in-person launch party, definitely track sales for the time you're doing the, the launch party. You know, people might buy it in person or, or if it's a virtual launch party, then you, you can obviously track those sales online. Now, remember your audience, they're there to buy your book and, you know, you can use creative methods to increase sales. So, you know, think outside the box a little bit. Now, offer something in return. Offer more in return, like Julie Broad on book launches, Alex Hormozy, you know, they do it beautifully, right? They do this really beautifully, okay? Um, now they have, I mean, this is just my observation, okay? But they have like a timer, for example, they're like, okay, the book launches here or the book is on sale for now. Um, get the book now or buy in bulk and then you'll get all these goodies or private access to some club or Facebook group or something, you know? Um, and they have like multiple tiers of goodies. So <laughs> for example, I'm just, you know, making this up, but if you buy one copy of my book, you're gonna get X. If you buy five copies, you're gonna get Y. If you buy 10 copies or more, and you get the whole kitchen sink and more, <laughs> you know, basically. So you get the idea, all right? Now, pro tip over here, you can also have like reviewer parties, and you can say anyone who leaves a review and sends you the evidence, like they send you a screenshot of something for the review they posted, then you can organize like a private function or meetup um, virtually as a group or in person as a group if you want. Um, and this kind of encourages people to leave reviews and that's social proof for your book. Now, finally, I just want to touch briefly on this thing. Once you know the revenue or income from this exercise, you can then go to subtract the costs that you calculated from the previous video. You know, I'll have details in the playlist later. Um, but, but basically you can get the net profit or loss once you, you're done with the uh, calculations on how well launch week or launch day or whatever is going. All right, so collect all the data and then at the end of it, see how you've, you've done. And either way, you know, data is great. You can see what moved the needle. You can see what you can try in the future that has a higher chance of working compared to other things that just didn't yield any results. If you're working on your manuscript and you want some pointers, I've got a playlist here to help you finish writing that book. Or if you completed writing your book and you want to learn more about how you can get more book reviews, I've got you covered in this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.